long come back from Lady Elliot Island which is a island located on the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef. It's the um, second time that my family and I visited this magical island and in this episode I'm going to go through what to take on a photo shoot assignment like this one. Which lens camera combinations work best for underwater nature photography, why it's totally worth taking your photography below the surface and in an extended version later we'll be giving tips on positioning and working with wildlife you can subscribe to our email newsletter to find out how to get that at a later date let's start with the photography gear that i took so the main camera i uh, shot with on the island was the 5d mark iii uh, full frame camera it's been my solid go-to for many years now um, the whole I've had the whole 5d series and uh, always does the trick the lens that I used mostly with it was the um, 8 to 15 mil fisheye lens underwater I'll go into more about that later uh, I took the 100 mil macro lens it's my favorite lens probably it's um, didn't take too many shots on the island, but I had it with me. I didn't take too much on this island trip. I had two speed lights, the uh, 600EX Canon speed lights. Um, with the housing, I had a housing for, for those speed lights. I also had um, the Aquatec uh, Elite housing, which housed my camera and lens. So that was for the photography side of it. So the um, video side of it because we did a bit of video we just used a basic uh, action camera GoPro Hero 4 so quite old but the specs are still really good the video is excellent out of it uh, for such a tiny camera this camera um, was used by Sharon and my two kids Delta and Billy they pretty much took it out every time we went snorkeling and um, got the footage that you'll see throughout this this YouTube clip and this video tutorial uh, also had this little device that sits on top of my tripod and um, moves so I can get moving time lapses. So there's a couple of time lapses that also roll out through this video and that's how I got the movement in it. And lastly, the camera that is filming this is the 7D Mark II, which I took some of the time lapses with, but once again, it was only really uh, with me for a backup camera. And the lens that's uh, on it right now is the 17 to 40, and I use that for uh, pretty much just the time lapses. It's also standing on a Manfrotto 055 tripod, which um, I use for my landscape photography and the time lapses. Okay, so that's the, the camera stuff, but to get the results underwater, you need some other gear like um, a snorkel. Yes, I own a pink snorkel. Not sure how that came about, but uh, yeah, I'm owning it. Um, a wetsuit, so I took a full length, but I mostly used just a spring suit, spring suit wetsuit. It's pretty warm, it was just late spring, so it's late, late autumn, I should say. Uh, a good mask is what you also need, so um, get your own mask, just more comfortable for diving. Some long swim fins, these ones are a cross between snorkel and free diving fins. Uh, they work pretty good for me, I'm not super serious at it. Um, also took some reef shoots, which are essential on a Lady, Lady Elliot Island. Lots of stonefish and cone shells, apparently, and they're super, super toxic if you tread on one. So definitely make sure you've got some reef shoes or those rubber croc shoes to walk around the island in the water with. The biggest mistake I made when packing for my Lady Elliot Island trip is that I didn't pack my weight belt. 
Um, last time I borrowed one of their weight belts and I thought I'd leave it behind so the air, you know, I wouldn't get stung for excess baggage because these are quite heavy. But if you haven't got a dive certificate with you, they will no longer lend you a, a, a weight belt. And this is a major bummer <laughs> when you're trying to get down deep and remain down there um, with a heavy buoyant housing and uh, the flash housing on top. Um, you just can't get down there. I mean, look at me trying to get down there. It's hilarious. So this was a huge struggle we had all week. And I know I missed a heap of angles that I wanted because I didn't have my weight belt. So the big tip, firstly, if you're going to do underwater photography, consider getting one of these weight belts to at least neutralize the buoyancy that your camera setup has. And also make sure you bring your own as you may not be able to hire without the necessary certifications and they might not have them. For this style of photography, underwater wildlife, I find that a super wide angle lens is the best to use. Firstly, and most important, when you are using a wide angle lens, it forces you to be close to the subject, which in turn improves the clarity factor of your picture. Shooting through stirred up sand and coral and all the other small particles floating around definitely interferes with getting sharp, clear, clear images. I use this lens, which is the eight to 15 Canon lens. It's a fisheye on my full frame uh, 5D camera uh, pretty much every time I got in the water this trip. I find this lens is, makes it easy to frame pictures without looking through the viewfinder. The lens is so wide that you get a turtle or a fish or a dolphin in, in full frame by just pointing in the general <laughs> direction. Uh, the housing, I use is the Aquatec Elite housing, and this housing is more designed for surface work like shooting surf action or split level shots. Not really going well below the surface, but they do work amazingly well, very deep, and stacks of water photographers are using them meters below the surface. So they can double up nicely. If you're only keen on photographing underwater stuff, I would look at the Icolite um, housings. With the Icolite housings, you can look through the viewfinder more easily. The Aquatec housing is tough, but not impossible to look through the viewfinder when you have a mask on. Um, this is why I like shooting with the housing out in front of me. So 99% of the time, I nail a good composition down there without looking through, through the lens, like through the viewfinder. So the 15 mil setting gives me freedom to shoot without looking through the viewfinder, which opens up my peripheral vision to scan for other wildlife while shooting. And it just feels easier to stay down there longer and propel myself through the water better with the camera out in front of me. The fisheye effect isn't as apparent underwater uh, as it is on land. That nasty bowing um, of the fisheye lens can look a little bit weird on land, but underwater it doesn't look too pronounced. If you are heading to the Great Barrier Reef or a location that has great, you know, snorkeling wildlife opportunities, I would strongly suggest taking some sort of waterproof camera. If you're a keen, if you're a keen photographer and I like Lady Elliot, it would be just cruel not to be able to record some of the magic that um, happens beneath the surface. It's just wild down there. Now it doesn't have to be a massive setup like this one. It would only I'd only consider investing the dollars into something like this if you are committed to doing water photography, you know, a lot. Um, there are now plenty of options that get amazing results. There are, there are heaps of crew getting epic results with their tiny little action cameras. You can also get very affordable, professionally built housings for your iPhone even. The Axis Go from Aquatech is one example. Um, there are lots of brands Olympus, Nikon, and Panasonic, just to name a few, that have compact versions of the waterproof uh, cameras. All, all of the above suggestions can cost well below $1,000 or some below $500 if you're going to make the journey to an island like Lady Elliot and are the slightest bit interested in photography, then it's an investment worth making, I reckon. Uh, the one shot or that once in a lifetime encounter with a feeding dolphin or a whale or a shark or a turtle will be worth capturing and you know, hanging on your wall. So yeah, I, I not only recommend um, getting, getting yourself a waterproof camera of some, some kind, but also visiting like a place like at Lady Elliot uh, Island as a photographer, it's just, you know, it's just a dream. And uh, even if you're not a photographer, it's just amazing swimming with uh, wildlife there. 
a lot of uh, I've met a lot of marine biologists who are on the island or visited the island that say it's one of the best places in the world for a diversity of marine creatures and um, yeah it's like I can't recommend it enough there's so many places in the world that are that are awesome as well so uh, yeah consider it for your next photography trip or just your holiday so please message below or email me with any questions regarding water photography, the gear or the techniques in achieving the best results for your photography. Um, below the surface, I'd love to help. If you want to expand your knowledge in the, in the photography world, I invite you to subscribe to our photography education newsletter. Links are in below the video, where you'll be kept informed with all the fresh content that we're offering and fast track that journey to your dream life through photography. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in once again. Hope you like.